Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about maybe focusing a little bit more on Ireland and cyber security, cyber crime in Ireland. So, uh, Iris Cert is uh, a cert I set up in 2008. Uh, we're actually a voluntary body, so everybody involved in the CERT are all volunteers. So we're ex various experts from the security community here. And we provide our services to the uh, Irish business community for free. So if you go to our website, you can sign up and we create alerts. And what we do is kind of what the two, Stephen and Olivia were talking about, is we collaborate and we work with other CERTs throughout Europe in response to, to, to incidents, be they based here or be they based elsewhere. And we're... Uh, closely tied in with the uh, CERT networks, with TFC, CERT, and FIRST.org as well. So when we look at the world and we look at the map, physically Ireland is a small little dot way up there uh, on, 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 on your left-hand side. We're, we kind of look physically, we're tucked away in the corner, we're nice and safe, but I think what we've seen today, this week in particular, is that while we may be physically surrounded by water, we're actually electronically and cyber uh, and, and through different networks, we're connected worldwide and we can, we can reach out to anybody in the world and anybody in the world can reach out back into us. And our economy is very dependent on the digital econ uh, environment and, and, and infrastructure. Eight of the top ten global ICT companies are based here in Ireland. Nine of the top ten global pharma companies are based here in Ireland as well. Six of the top ten global games companies are based in Ireland. I think, you know, if, if, if anything, we should be uh, congratulating the IDA Ireland on, on the great work they're doing in getting these, these, these businesses here. Seventeen of the top 25 global medical device companies are based here in Ireland. Ten of the top, the top ten born the internet companies are here, so Facebook, uh, Twitter, etc. They're all based here in Ireland as well. 50% of the world's leading financial services firms have a presence here in Ireland as well, down the IFSC. And I think very importantly for us here in this room, 94% of Irish enterprises depend on the internet for business. So I think what those statistics show is that computers, internet and networks are, are very crucial to how we do business today and how we ma maintain business as well. And I think these are just some of... You know, just to highlight how important cybersecurity is, these are a number of organizations in the past 12 to 24 months that have had a cybersecurity breach in some way, shape, or form. Now, I'm not going to go through all the different ones there, but you can see some very big, well-known names there. They've all reached the front page of the headlines, and I think you know, this week is not going to go without talking about Loyalty Build, where they've had a security breach which has impacted uh, hundreds of thousands and over a million people uh, throughout Europe. So security is, being, being very, uh, uh, is, is more and more critical to businesses. So we, we actually run our own cybercrime conference and we have it on next week. And what we do is each year we take all the statistics of all the incidents that are reported to us. So these are incidents that are reported to us. They come to us from other certs outside the jurisdiction. They come to us from private sector companies that are, are do a lot of work in this area to alert us that there are potential problems here in Ireland. And they come to us from companies here in Ireland who report to us for us to reach out to certs in other jurisdictions to help deal with cybercrime. So these are just instantly reported to us. There's probably, I know that there's a lot of uh, people here from different companies in, working in security consulting and, and services, and they're all flat out busy. So, you know, there's a lot more going on than just what's been, been reported to us. Uh, but I just want to break down some of these incidents because what tends to get the headlines is the major data security breaches. So the loyalty build incident is grabbing the headlines. But criminals are looking to break into people's networks, not just to steal data. Data is very important to them, be that financial data, which they can abuse and, 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 and commit fraud, but intellectual property. So they're looking to break into companies' networks to steal intellectual property, which they can sell to competitors. They're looking for personal information that they can sell on. Your online personal data, like I believe you talked about, a, for $2, you can take down a, your, your competitor's website with a DDoS attack. Your online data is worth about $1 to $5, depending on how much information. So your email address, your name, your date of birth, all the information is sold online. A credit card... That is, is fully 
uh, with a credit balance up to maybe $15,000, can typically get between $1 to $5 on the, on, on the, on the underground market. And it's a, it's a supply and demand. These, th- these underground markets, they're like the uh, criminal equivalent of eBay, and they rate, rate each other. You know, yes, Brian, he's a very trustworthy criminal. He's a five-star. You can sell your credit cards to him. He is going to give you money. Uh, Olivier, don't trust him so much. He's only got a two-star. You know, he never, he never delivers. Or the credit card data is not, is, is, is not as valuable. But they're dealing with these things. And, and Olivier did highlight you don't need to be a technology guru to do this. All you need is a credit card. These services are out there. So criminals are using these things. And for those DDoS attacks and those spam runs and, and some of the statistics that came up in Steve's presentation, those other types of attacks, they need the infrastructure to do it. Now, criminals aren't going to go to a data center and hire and, and pay for a server. They're going to break into your networks and use your, net, your network bandwidth, use your server bandwidth, and use your PCs to control and, and operate things. So, for example, they run botnets. So this is where they send out viruses and infect hundreds of thousands of computers, even millions of computers around the world, and they now control that network. Your computer, if it's infected, you will not notice it because they don't want that to happen. They want to use your computer. And if they want to attack a website in a DDoS attack, they've got their $2 for somebody to attack another website, they will just send commands out to those hundreds of thousands of computers, and all those hundreds of thousands of computers will take part in those attacks without, without the owner's knowledge. And that's how botnets work. So the, not only do they want to break in to steal your data, they want to break in to use your infrastructure as well and to store their information. So this is just maybe a highlight for the company side. And a lot of the companies we deal with and the instances we've dealt with will be typically in the SME sector. And that's an area that I think has a, a lot of challenges when it comes to cybersecurity because they don't have the, t- the resources or the skills in this area. The larger companies and larger organizations do have dedicated in-house teams so can deal with this threat in a much, much better so I said we had 432 instances. So we had, uh, of those instances, 74% of them were where criminals broke into websites here in Ireland to host their phishing sites to attack financial institutions or other institutions le- elsewhere. So this is where they break into a website. It, they wouldn't alter the, the original website. It still operates and works the way it should be. But sitting in parallel to that website, they have their fake website up that maybe. It could be attacking Citibank, it could be attacking, attacking a, a bank from Japan, it could be attacking PayPal, and they send out their emails to try and fish that information and they direct the, the people to those, to those websites. So they're using Irish websites to host phishing sites. So that's 75% of the instances we deal with have been in that area. 19% were where they broke into websites to host viruses. So when you go to visit that website, the website looks normal and operates normally, but if your machine is not updated with good antivirus software or hasn't got the latest security patches installed on your computer, it will automatically download this virus and infect your computer. And the crimson will then use that then to steal your personal data, your financial data, or as I said earlier on, to try and use it as part of a botnet to, to, to attack other companies as well. And then 7% we've instance where there was DDoS attacks and, and various other, other attacks. But you can see a good proportion, well over 90%, were based on SMEs. Based on our analysis of that information, is, and we only do this analysis based on the, the motivation, be why would you host a phishing site? Well, it's because you want to steal people's money, so therefore 95% of those instances is organized crime behind it. So the archetypical image we have of the cyber criminal of some teenage uh, boy stuck in a basement uh, playing heavy metal music and eating pizza and, and scanning machines and just trying to break in. That's no longer there. This is cr- organized crime. These are organized criminals who see the opportunity and the growth to be able to tax systems and steal money. So organized crime is very, very heavily involved in this area as well. And we just talked about uh, ransomware. And, and we actually, last year, we had an uh, instance of where criminals would break into the network of a company. And what they would do is they alter the backup tapes and the backup software on that, uh, on, uh, for that company. So the backups would still run, but the backups don't back up any data. So it overwrites the media you're backing up onto. So if you've got a tape for your Monday night backup, your tape is overwritten with nothing. Same with Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. So you, this continues on for a few weeks. You're quite happily getting your notification emails back up ran successfully, but you're actually backing up nothing. Your tapes, in effect, are blank. 
They then come back in again, and they encrypt your hard disk with industry-grade encryption keys, so we, it, it can't be decrypted. Now, your first reaction when you respond to this is, oh, that's great, I'll just go get my backup tape, I'll do a restore, and I've got my data back. But you did put your tape in the, in the tape machine, and you've got no data. So now, as a business owner, you are stuck. Do you pay this ransom, as you can see there, of 3,000 euro, or do you rebuild your data that you've spent thousands of man hours putting into place? In all the cases we're aware of, the people have ended up paying the, ran the ransomware uh, to, to these criminals. In actual fact, one gang actually had a customer rating website that if you went to the website and gave them a positive rating, they'd give you a 20% discount on the ransom. You know, these people are business people. They, they, they're, not, they, they're in it to make money. And when we actually went into it, and, uh, you know, Steve talked about black swan events like Stuxnet and everything else and, and even loyalty build, they're all grabbing the headlines or the big news and, and it's, it's what gets the media and, and, and grabs people's attention. But when we looked into those instances, this is where the root cause of the problem is. It's poor passwords. It's people using the same passwords across different systems. It's people using password one as their password, or if they're going to be really sophisticated, using password one, two, because an extra number is going to make them more secure. So it's, it's poor passwords and poor password management that have caused the problems. Missing patches, where servers have not been patched. The web servers have not been patched, so the company is invested in getting a new website, and the website being put up, website goes live, and they forget about it. Now, to me, that's akin in this digital age of opening up a shop front on a, a main street in, a, in the town, and not painting it every few years and not keeping it tidy because it, it, it dilapidates. Your website is the same thing. You have to keep it maintained, you have to keep it updated and secure. But many companies forget about that, and then we can have these, these attacks. Or likewise, on the other side where as PCs are compromised is computers not having the operating system patches uh, or updated antivirus software on it. And there's been a lot of attacks on particular web platforms. So it's very common to use different web platforms to create websites, and very often these platforms will end up with, with, with uh, vulnerabilities in them, and you can have these mass attacks. So there may be a vulnerability found in a particular web platform today. The criminals will find out about it. They will write an automated tool to scan the Internet for those uh, vulnerabilities on those, those platforms, and then uh, infect, it, it compromise those websites. And one of the big things is out-of-date antivirus software, where antivirus software has not been updated, and that has allowed infection to happen. But I suppose overall, the big things is lack of monitoring. So there is a lot of data in companies' networks. The, the security devices that are there, the antivirus software, uh, is, is monitoring what's going on and being aware of what's happening in your network and reacting to alerts that you've got a security breach or a potential security breach. That is a big thing because... All of those 432 incidents that we were involved in, not one of the companies knew they had a security problem until, we, on, until they were contacted by us. So I think that's a pretty startling statistic, you know, that these companies did not know they had a security problem until somebody else told them. You know, if somebody broke into your business and, and broke, kicked down your front door or broke a window to get in, you would know straight away the next morning because you can physically see that you, will, you can monitor your physical presence. You need to monitor your, your online presence as well. So hopefully that, that's an area that, you know, from education awareness that people can, can try and improve. So what I would suggest and what we need to do is make people more aware of what the, the threats are out there, but even more aware of how to deal with those threats and how, what simple steps they can take to in, increase and enhance the security, such as making sure users are using secure passwords, that patches are applied, that systems are being monitored properly. Because, you know, we're Irish, we have a long history of security. There's Dune Angus on the west coast of Ireland. It has the layered security approach that we all talk about. Those rocks at the very front there, they're all angled and built into the ground so that you approaching the fort, you have to weave your way around. There's multiple walls that you have to get by. And each of those walls, the entrances are not, they're all in different ways, so you have to work your way through. And, of course, at the back of it, you've got a huge cliff. Now, today, that's not very good to defend against an air attack or somebody throwing mortars into it, but, uh, the, you know, it still is a layered approach, and what, that's what we should be doing with our networks as well. Typically, again, in lots of networks, we have perimeter security, but inside the network, we don't have any security, and 
once you're in, you have access to everything and anything. So companies need to look at ways how to layer that approach and, and, and layer their, their defenses as well. And we do need uh, to maybe reiterate the, the message coming through this morning is cooperation. We do need to, to, to share information and good information so that we can react to it and we can, we can work on it. And we need to work better within the industry and within the community and with law enforcement and other agencies because uh, one thing that frustrates me is that a lot of those issues that we've probably dealt with have probably not been reported to, to, to Angarda Shia Kona. So if we don't know what crime is happening in, in, in this space that is so critical to our environment, how can we ensure the proper resources and the proper people are being given to it to tackle it? I was happy to see Minister Shatter actually make a quote, quote this summer uh, that cybersecurity is a complex issue that requires cooperation across all sectors to ensure the safety of our networks and infrastructure. And I think it's great to see the attention at that level being given now to cybersecurity, and hopefully that can drive uh, a, a few changes throughout the industry as well. So I'd like to thank you very much for your time, and I'd like to thank the IEA for the opportunity to address you today, to maybe to highlight you and maybe bring the story a bit more local than, than, than what we've heard today. So thank you very much.